So today we look at God's Big Story, Sermon 11, Temptation but No Fall, and the passage is from Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 13. Now Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wild. For forty wilderness days and nights he was tested by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when the time was up he was hungry. The devil, playing on his hunger, gave the first test. Since you're God's son, command this stone to turn into a loaf of bread. Jesus answered by quoting Deuteronomy, It takes more than bread to really live. For the second test he led him up and spread out all the kingdoms of the earth on display at once. Then the devil said, They're yours in all their splendour to serve your pleasure. I'm in charge of them all and can turn them over to whomever I wish. Worship me and they're yours, the whole works. Jesus refused again, backing his refusal with Deuteronomy. Worship the Lord your God, and only the Lord your God, serve him with absolute single-heartedness. For the third test, the devil took him to Jerusalem and put him on top of the temple. He said, if you are God's son, jump. It's written, isn't it, that he has placed you in the care of angels to protect you. They will catch you. You won't so much as stub your toe on a stone. Yes, said Jesus, and it's also written, don't you dare tempt the Lord your God. That completed the testing. The devil retreated temporarily, lying in wait for another opportunity. There's um, a well-known saying from Oscar Wilde. He said, I can resist anything but temptation. I suspect most of us can relate to that. The very nature of temptation is that it's so hard to resist. It's designed to make you give in. Temptation is also linked with the idea of doing something negative. We don't really think of someone tempting us to do good things, do we? Egging us, go on, go on, volunteer your time at the food bank or at the local charity shop. or you know, Run a marathon for charity and raise loads of money. Get out there and, um, and, and demonstrate against injustices in society. Go on, I dare you. We're more likely to be tempted to drink the alcohol we gave up for Lent or have two slices of cake when we're trying to eat a bit more healthily. That little voice in our head saying it won't do any harm. Well, that's what the serpent told Eve about eating the forbidden fruit and look what happened there. The temptation facing Adam and Eve was to eat a fruit that looked good to eat. The underlying temptation was about disobeying God, rebelling against his authority and asserting their own. In our reading from Luke's Gospel, we hear about Jesus' temptations from the devil to disobey God and assert his own authority. But unlike Adam and Eve, he was tempted but didn't fall. The first temptation is about his identity and his use of power. He's being asked to prove who he is by using his God-given power and authority to turn the stones into bread, to meet his own physical need, but also to use miracles to prove his identity. In the second temptation, Jesus is taken to the mountain top, to which in the Bible is traditionally a place of prayer and God's presence. A shortcut is offered to him that he can obtain the kingdoms of the world if he worships Satan. But Jesus came to establish God's kingdom on this earth. In the third temptation, Jesus is led to the highest point of the temple in Jerusalem, where the devil tempts him to throw himself off the mountain top. The devil questions his identity again. If you are the son of God... And using scripture tempts Jesus to put God's word to protect him to the test. Each time, Jesus responds not by entering into an argument or discussion with the devil, but by asserting God's authority by using scripture. To the first temptation, he says, man does not live by bread alone. To the second, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And to the third temptation, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And there... In the context of dueling Bible verses, the devil is defeated. We've looked at the importance of the fall along with God's plan to repair the damage by using the people of Israel to draw humanity back to God, reversing the impact of the fall. Some scholars see the background for Jesus' wilderness temptations as Israel's wilderness wanderings, just as the 40 days may reflect the 40 years Israel spent in the wilderness after the first Passover. Luke ends the passage by telling us when the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. This suggests that he will be back, that Jesus will continue to face temptation. Satan will continue to tempt him from taking the way of the cross to abandon his true mission and ministry. But Jesus always resists as he knows that there is no shortcut to salvation.
And so it is for us too. Whatever tests us in the wilderness will turn up again. Whatever it is that seeks to keep us from living fully as God wants us to, seeking our vocation and responding to it, being witnesses for Christ, never gives up and seeks out opportune times to tempt us away from God. But because Jesus wasn't tempted, and as many Christians suggest he is the replacement for Adam and Israel, through Jesus the fall will be overcome and all people can be brought back to God. Amen.